Hey guys, you to wear 100 here. Alright, and here I am to continue Nick Jelidian with a review of Snow Day. <sighs> I'm going to tell you guys the same thing that I posted on my Facebook. I hope you guys appreciate what I do for you. Man, I mean, this has been a movie I have never cared about at all. Didn't care about this when it was originally released. Didn't care about it when it came to video. Didn't care about it, care about it when I grew up. Don't care about it now. I mean, I have never cared about this movie at all. Didn't see it when it came out in theaters. And yeah, I didn't even see this movie at all until like I was probably 16 years old. And even then, I still was not able to get through the whole thing. This movie... This is, like, the most... Oh, man. Yeah, this is just, like, a completely uncreative, generic plot of a movie. I mean, this is just, like, the most most standard thing ever I mean it's there's not even really much of a premise at all in this movie I mean all it is really is just kids having fun playing in snow and you know, they don't want the snow to clear up and they want to be out of school that's pretty much just what this movie is about and it's just so freaking generic and it's not interesting and this is just like Oh man, this is just like a completely uncreative idea. I mean, it's like somebody just thought of this in like two minutes. Oh, let's just make a movie about kids playing in snow. I mean, it's just, oh man, it's so freaking, oh man. It's so substandard. It's so uninteresting. I mean, there's just like nothing creative about this movie at all. Oh, well, I mean, seriously, I mean, I was saying before that... And that, like, Harriet the Spy doesn't really have anything for a, to really recommend to any adult, but kids can really watch it and enjoy it. This doesn't even have that. I mean, I really don't even see how kids can enjoy this. I said before I wanted nostalgia Critic to review Harriet the Spy, but, yeah, this, I mean, I just, I want to see him review this. I mean, I, this is just like begging for a nostalgia Critic review. I mean, it's just completely, you like, yeah, it's just lacking anything that really makes a movie interesting or creative. I mean, yeah, if I had seen this movie all the way through before, when I made my nostalgia critic reviews I wanted to see done, this would have definitely been on the list. I mean, seriously, this is just, oh, this is just like the most, oh, it's just like so substandard, so generic, I mean, seriously, why did they even bother making this, and why did they actually have it released in theaters? I mean, this is just, this just feels, feels like a movie that they could have just, like, made for TV. I mean, it's that freaking generic. I mean, it's basically just a made-for-TV movie just released in theaters. That's how, really, how bland this movie really is. I mean, seriously, I mean, I can't... I mean, I'm really not going to, like, just go through, like, the movie's plot like I normally do, because really, there's really just, like, nothing really for me to talk about with this. I mean, it's just so standard, just so generic. I mean, like I said before, you have, like, the stuff with, it's, like, the streets being snowed, owed in, and, you know, all, like, school is closed, and a lot of other places are closed, and so, yeah, kids love it like this, and they just want the... It uh, can remain like this and stop the stop the snow plow from clearing up the streets and yeah they just like go after the driver of the snow plow and try to stop him from um clearing the streets and it's just like so freaking path like just so generic and it's like you can like do this for anything and really I mean you could this is just feels like like something for like a kid's sick common just yeah it was just basically the premise of a TV show really I mean that's how substandard this movie really was 
And also you have the other, another, like, story arc in this movie, where you have, like, the older brother of the main character, he's, like, falling for this girl that he likes, but at the same time, like, one of, like, his, one of his other friends actually has a lust for him. And so, yeah, he goes through all the trouble in this movie to just, like, try to, to get the, the girl he likes, the attention. And then, yeah, and of course he, like, can't, can't do it, because, like, he gets shy, and he feels that she doesn't pay attention to him, and, yeah, you have just that standard story that has been used to death before. I mean, I've seen this done so many times, where there's a guy that likes a girl, or a girl that likes a guy, and they want to, like, have a reason to talk to them, and they really want that person to like them, but they just get too shy or shy to do it, actually go up and talk to them, and so they just end up like bailing and they're just trying to get away for the person to notice them i mean we've seen this done so many times and then w it doesn't even lead to anything at all oh i mean we, we see like the yeah the girl turns out like has like a bad bad boy ex-boyfriend and she tries to get back together with her and all that and then yeah the brother then fights with the guy over the girl and then Ends up later at the end of the movie after he finds out that his his regular friend like likes him, he then just decides to bail on the girl he likes and just goes back with his friend. I mean, goes through all that trouble just to call it off at the end. I mean, I just hate the hate stories like that. And, <sighs> yeah, and we do have like the stuff like I was talking about before. We have like the main girl and her friends like and wishing for it to snow and then it eventually does and then are we then yeah they are happy about it and it turns out that the snowplow driver they try to stop him each and every year and the sister says this year that she's gonna do it what and then yeah she just along with her two friends she just tries whatever she can to try to stop the driver from plowing the streets. And then she ends up like kidnapping the driver's like bird and at the same time the driver kidnaps one of her friends and he offers her the friend back in exchange for his bird but she gives like the driver like a bribe that uh, if he wants the bird back then he needs to Give them another snow day. Okay, and then, yeah, he gets the bird back, but then he doesn't hold up his end of the bargain. He lets the friend go. And then, yeah, he ends up plowing the streets anyway. And then, it just turns out then, at the end, like, all the kids in the neighborhood all team up on the driver. And then they, they just end up ganging up on him. And then they take away his plow and then just unplow and just rip fill back up the streets with the snow that the driver cleared up before. Or so, I mean, yeah, it's just like a completely pointless premise of this movie, especially for a theatrical film. I mean, you, you know, I just don't even see why they made this. I mean, this is like the most uncreative thing ever for Nickelodeon in movies. I mean, before with this, I mean, when they released Harriet the Spy, it was, like, based on a book. I haven't read the book before. I forgot to mention in my review for Harriet the Spy. I haven't read the book before, so I didn't know how much... can't really say, like, how well, like, the movie is true to the book and how much it sticks to the source material, but it at least did have, like, a creative and interesting premise with the Harriet, like, as a spy who's, like... Yeah, she's like the only person her age that actually does the kind of stuff she does. And, yeah, it was an interesting premise for that. And then it was creative. Good Burger, it was also like, had a really creative story. Because it was pretty diff it was really different from how the sketches were on the show. Oh, and, yeah, they did actually come up with a creative story for the Good Burger in the movie. The Regrets movie, it wasn't, like, as creative, but it still did have, like, its, like, interest in it. And, yeah, it still had some creativity to it because, yeah, like I said, I did like what they did with it. I mean, it, it was connected with the show and they had an episode prior to the movie leading up to it. 
And yeah, even the events of the movie carried over to the show, and it did have some creativity to it. Like it was it had kind of some different things from the show, oh, so with like some of the stories and scenes that we actually get in the movie. I mean, we didn't really see a, like a lot of the stuff that was in the movie that we get in the show, so it did have some creativity to it. But this. I mean, like I said before, just a completely substandard, uncreative, generic story. I mean, yeah, it's just like, you you could have just put this on TV. I mean, you didn't actually have to have make people pay money to go see this. I mean, I just don't understand it. I mean, the least they could have done was like, at least give this movie something creative, but they don't. I mean, it's just such a substandard kid story. And it has just a bunch of cliches that we've seen in, in so many times before this. I mean, you got the parents, one is kind of a workaholic, and the other is like kind of like unhappy about their job, but they need to do what they're doing anyway. And then, you know, he tries to model, like, make their kids feel good. And they're also like, you have the youngest child who's kind of like a brat. And uh, then, you know, like I said, you have, like, the like the older b sibling falling for another er, person that they have a crush on. And, yeah, and yeah, you have, like, the bad boy boyfriend. Yeah, I've already talked about it. So, yeah, I mean, I just really ha don't really know, like, what they were thinking when they did this movie. I mean, I would probably only give this movie one star out of four at most. I mean, I just... I just really don't know why they really decided to do it like this, and especially, like, at least give it a creative story, and they don't. I mean, I just, like I said before, I just never did care about this movie at all in my life. I mean, yeah, I didn't care about it when and it was originally released. When it came to video, I just avoided it, didn't care. <laughs> yeah, and even, like I said before, when I finally did try to watch this movie when I got older, like when I was 16, I just couldn't even get through the whole thing. I mean, it was just completely just boring and just uncreative, and I didn't like it. Oh man, I just, I just really don't know what else to say. I mean, there's probably only one thing in this movie that I actually do kind of like about it, and that is that it, like, it was, gave an introduction of Josh Peck into Nickelodeon because yeah this movie does have Josh Peck as one of the friends in this movie and then yeah Josh Peck would like become a big star in Nickelodeon like he would eventually go on to be a cast member on the Amanda show and then of course like he then starred with Drake Bell and Drake and Josh so yeah I mean that's probably like one of the the only thing that I do kind of like about this movie was that it was an introduction to Josh Peck into Nickelodeon and then even now, like, Josh Peck, he still does kind of, like, have a decent acting career. Yeah, this movie probably just did the best thing for him. I mean, because the movie did have, like, Chevy Chase in it, but Chevy Chase was already a star, and even then, this really doesn't help him at all. And, yeah, and, yeah, I just, and there's, like, a few other there are well-known stars in this movie. Like, Chris Elliott, Gene Smart, Iggy Pop. Yeah, I mean, it has a few, like, decent stars in it, but... Yeah, it's, it's just really, like, doesn't mean anything, because, I mean, they're just, like, wasted in this movie, and, yeah. Even, like, the villain of the movie, the driver of the snowplow, he's pretty wasted, too, I mean... And they don't really make him look that intimidating. They don't really make him look cool. They were just, yeah, they just make him look pathetic, especially what happens to him at the end of the movie. I mean, I just really have no idea what they were trying to do with the movie. I mean, I feel this was probably like intended for people, like really young kids under the age of five, because, yeah, I just like turned six when this movie was originally released and yeah, I didn't care about it at all. And yeah, you know, I probably think that this would only get the interest of children under the age of five. That's the way I see it. So I mean, yeah, like I said before, I mean, I just really don't even see how kids could even enjoy this at all. And yeah, it just doesn't have, have any creativity to it at all. So yeah, I said before that if you had 
kids like Terry the Spy, they may enjoy it. But yeah, don't even let anybody. I don't recommend you watching this movie at all. I mean, it's just a complete waste of time. I mean, don't even waste the hour and a half this movie is, and don't put yourself through it because it's just a waste of time. All right, so yeah, that's all I really have to say about Snow Day. Yeah, like I said, just one star out of four at the most. Yeah, I know this is like was kind of different from my usual reviews, but like I said, just I really just don't can't really go through this movie from beginning to end because I mean it's just there's really nothing to really say other than everything that I've just talked about and the way I've mentioned it. So, yeah, that's just, yeah. So, yeah, it's just why this is a different style of review than what I usually do. But, uh, yeah, next time I will, like, it will be back to normal, a normal review the way I usually do it. Because, yeah, I'm going to get back to a, another interesting movie after this. So, alright, that does it for my review of Snow Day. I... Hope you guys enjoyed the way I did it. And so, yeah. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.